you're like me, always exploring Tulsa. You never leave the house without a hat that could pose as a disguise. That is you to a T, Stevie. Mr. Inconspicuous, your character stands out so much. I bet you even got recognized when you used to be on the radio. Yeah, but people always tell me that I sounded much taller. <laughs> there was a time when we didn't know what many of our favorite entertainers looked like because they were all part of the golden age of radio. When I was a kid, I loved comic books, and so I would read comic books. And then in 1973, I was at my grandmother's house, and I was tootling along the radio, doing what people who were interested in radio would do. They call it DXing, listening for stations a long way away. But I picked up KGGF in Coffeeville, and at 6.15 in the evening, they were playing a radio show called Lum and Abner about two old men who ran a convenience store in a town called Pine Ridge, Arkansas. And just these two men talking. And I was like, what is that? So I ran and got my grandmother and brought her back. And I said, you know, Mima, what is this? It was on this very radio, actually. And she said, oh, that's Lum and Abner. That was on the radio in the 40s. And at the end of it, they said, well, tune in again tomorrow night for Lum. I said, all right, I'll tune in again tomorrow night. So I collected my money from my Tulsa Tribune paper route and bought a radio with a cassette player in it, and I hit record and play every night at 6.15 and started collecting old radio shows. Finally, I got to a point where I had a pretty substantial collection and I could trade with other people and dealers and I would have something they didn't have or they whatever. Then I started looking for the transcription disc, the big 16-inch records, and started collecting those, and if you had a rare one of those shows that nobody had, you could parlay that into 20, 30 shows from somebody so they could get that show. But once it got recorded and it was out there, it went around the circles and everybody got it. You don't know what people remember. And for people of my age set, we remember Bob Hope and Jack Benny, uh, people like that. Um, but there were great performers on the radio like Orson Welles, who did Citizen Kane, the movie. Marion and Jim Jordan, who played Privin McGee and Molly. Chester Locke and Norris Goff, who played Lum and Abner. And Freeman Gosden and Charlie Carell, two white men who portrayed two black men on the radio. In the 1920s, they started. They were on the air in Chicago as Sam and Henry, and then they, they moved, went nationwide as Amos and Andy the number one radio show of all time, still the number one radio show of all time. And blacks and whites both loved it. The blacks loved being represented on the radio, and the whites loved the comedy. And it's still loved today. And I still play the show today. CFO, it's another Sunday night all across America, and right here in Tulsa. I always said when I did this show, I didn't want to make money doing it. I just wanted to pass this art form down to future generations. And the great thing about radio is the theater of the mind because you can hear a compelling story with a boogeyman in it and that your boogeyman is the worst boogeyman in the world. And mine may look completely different, but to me it's the worst in the world. But you got to use your imagination with these shows. You know, they were brilliantly written, performed, and the ones that still survive today, they, they stand up to the test of time because they were good and it was a great art form back then. Fortunately, there are people who have recorded them on different types of media. Um, like I said, I wanted to be able to pass this down to future generations, which I've been able to do through this show. I've had people call me who were kids back in 1983 and 4 who listened to Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy, and, can, and now their kids are listening to it. So what it means for me now is I did what I wanted to do. I didn't care, I didn't want to make money off of it, get rich or anything like that. I just wanted to pass it down to future generations. And fortunately, I've been very lucky in being able to do that. Mm -hmm.